Now Habersham is proud to sponsor interviews with the candidates for the May 24th political primaries. We hope by viewing these personal interviews, you'll get to know the candidates who will be making decisions that impact your life, your family, and your livelihood here at the local and state level in Georgia. We hope you'll vote May 24th, and we hope you'll be more informed in that process by hearing from the candidates themselves in these one-on-one -on -one interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. Hi, this is Now Habersham. I'm Dick Stafford. We're visiting this afternoon with Locke Arnold, a candidate for County Commissioner District 5 in Habersham County. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How are you Good doing? to see you, Locke. Good to see you. So let me ask you a few questions. Let's start with your education. Tell us a little bit about your formal education or even informal education uh, during your life that maybe has prepared you for a position on Habersham County Commissioners. I'm a graduate of Habersham Central, 1975. Uh, Marine Corps for six years, went through all their schools. Uh, search and recovery diver. As far as college, I have none. I, I went to uh, the trade school from 77 to 79 in small ends, but as, as far as a college education, I don't have any. I went into business in 1982, and I'm just a self-taught person. That's all I am. But surely there are great things you have learned from the business you had and from the, uh, the diving experiences you've had. That, you, that would be applicable to you as a leader uh, of the county. Some Absolutely. things, um, Absolutely. some personality traits, things like that. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Well, when you're self-employed, you don't get paid unless you make the money. That's the first thing I learned very quickly. Over the years, I've established a, a 4,000 plus customer base. A business will not survive without a customer base. Take care of your customers and they'll take care of you. And I've been doing it for 30 years. In fact, May 2nd will be my 30-year anniversary at where I'm at right now today at 127 Rennie Hames Road. Um, I'm just a self-taught welder, and uh, I, I just got on it. It was kind of a little knack, or, and I enjoyed doing it, and one thing led to another. I was working here and working there. I worked at Massey Ferguson for a while, and uh, I just had a welding shop in the back of my uh, back of my shop and uh, I started coming home and there was something laying there to do and it just grew and grew. Started at Ellicks Mountain, then I went to, uh, on the other side of Ellicks Mountain, then I went to Clarksville and then I've been out there where I'm at for 30 years. I'm just self-taught, uh, not a very highly educated person, but uh, I'm very business savvy because I have been self-employed and uh, you gotta be, do something right if you're gonna be in it for 30 years. I'm the oldest running welding shop in uh, Habersham County. Mm -hmm. Great. We have seven uh, municipalities in Habersham County, <clears throat> along with the county government. Uh, in the past, I've lived here almost 30 years, so in that time there have been periods where the, these entities did not get along that well and were even at odds with each other. Uh, but in the past few years, it seems that the relationship has improved. Tell me a little bit about what you foresee for the future if you're elected as District 5 com uh, County Commissioner in terms of the different government agencies within the county along with the Habersham County Commission. What are, what are some things we can work on together? How do you perceive uh, gelling this team so we can make progress for the people of Habersham County? Transparency is everything. The single most damaging thing that ever happened that destroyed the confidence with the people of this county and the commissioners is when they went behind the backs of those people in 2007 and paid a million plus dollars for a piece of property and didn't tell nobody about it. And now we're about to take a half a million dollar hit. And it's more than that. You figured out the engineering and stuff like that. That is, uh, that, uh, that destroyed the confidence of the people. Is the confidence coming back? Yes. But you see the way Alto has went, Baldwin, Cornelia, they step out on their own, and I don't blame them a bit. We're about to take a half a million dollar hit. A commissioner, uh, if you go around sneaking behind the backs of people, that's not gonna work. I believe in transparency. I believe you'll never see me do anything until I talk to the people that I serve. Uh, this uh, going behind the walls and shutting the door and say, listen, we're elected, that's what you, elected us to do, that's fine and well, and they have that right to do so. But under no circumstances did they have the right to purchase a piece of property and spend a million dollars of our money just because they have a, you know, I mean, who's gonna pay for it? The taxpayers. And transparency is everything. That's all there is to that. 
Let's talk about the uh, the old courthouse. This would be the the middle courthouse, not yes, the old yes. old one, but yeah. the yes. the more recent old one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we do have some administrative offices there. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your take on what should happen to that building? What what is your thought about that? Because a lot of people are talking about that right now. The city of Clarksville is in a a a change right now. The building, the, some people say destroy it, some people say this and some people say that. That building can be salvaged. Is it a beauty queen? No. <laughs> but my personal opinion, you go buy the old Ingalls property, retrofit it, move all the administrative services out there, tax office, code enforcement, sheriffs, everybody, anybody and everybody, you take them out there and retrofit that place and then go back and take that old courthouse and uh, open it up to um, the people within the county needs. Somebody needs an office space or something like that. That building's still good. We just spent a million and a half dollars on it a while back. What are you gonna do, just tear it down? It can be salvaged. This mold is, that's just hearsay. I mean, I, it's, there's probably some mold there, but it's just to tear it down just because somebody's got a wild. For what they want to tear that building down, you can go out and purchase the old Ingalls property for. For what it's gonna cost to scrap that place and get it all tore down when it's all over said and done i bet you we could take that money and go and offer that uh, to those uh, her name is teresa wilmot we can go make a substantial offer on that old ingles property it's all there infrastructure water sewer pavement it just needs to be cleaned up and fixed up and and retrofitted to our needs it's all there uh, personally i would not tear the building down and uh and maybe uh rent, rent, rent it out to a business Rent it out uh, to somebody that needs a little office space. You take it in Atlanta now, they're building these high rises and they're retrofitting the inside of it and people are coming in there and renting that particular office. Habersham County could do that. But as far as tearing it down, I'm not really wild about doing it because it's a stable structure and, uh, and, and it's, it's not the prettiest girl at the dance, but uh, she, <laughs> she'll still dance, that's for sure. My sons are products of Habersham County Schools. <clears throat> almost their entire 12 years. And uh, the older one is an attorney in another state. And I was visiting him the other day and he lives two blocks from the local hospital in uh, upper state, upstate New York. And uh, it's a hospital that looks about the same size as Habersham County. And it's uh, just a, a mile from the Hudson River. It's a, it's a county that's county very hospital. much like ours. Exactly. Uh -huh. And which is repeated all over the United States. We have yes. these small county hospitals that have been there for many, many decades, still owned uh, mm -hmm. locally by the mm -hmm. authority. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, Dad, I just got elected president of the hospital authority. And I said, Good for him. I said, so I said, what's that mean? He said, trouble. <laughs> We're way well, in debt. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I said, well, uh, you know, when you broke your arm, our hospital back home is in the same situation. And I said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we all want to keep the hospital and we would all like to keep the hospital owned locally, but we're not sure we can do that. So tell me, uh, uh, Locke, what, what are your thoughts about the future of Habersham Medical Center? Habersham County Medical Center is not a regional hospital. Mm -hmm. It is a county hospital. I believe the retrofit that they did was was needed. When you have a, an emergency room, people can walk in there with no money, get serviced, and walk out and not have to pay a dime. They'll send them a bill, they'll send them another bill, they'll send them another bill. Sometimes uh, you have to, uh, in business, and this is one thing I have learned, in business, you have got to get aggressive on your bill collectors, I mean collections, uh, especially at something like this, uh, I see there's a problem in collections. Uh, you know, just because they come in and get service for free, that don't mean it's free. Mm -hmm. You have got to get in there and say, listen, you owe us. You know, when you weren't complaining about money when you walked in, so we want some money. Mm -hmm. I mean, monthly, I don't care, but you got people that owe thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 at hospital, and they say, well, you can't get blood out of a turnip and they're sitting on you know, 50 acres of land or 100 acres of land and, and got a $20,000 fishing boat and driving around in a nice truck and a nice house. And that's unacceptable for me. If you have to go in there 
and, and take them to court. I mean, go after the money. That's one thing about small business that I've learned. You know, if you let people beat you out of money, word will get out, and then you'll have, you know, it'll, it'll be a fish fry. Everybody, everybody will be cut, coming there to eat. Mm-hmm. And um, and you got to go after the money. The hospital, it's a business. You got to run at that. And that's one thing I, you know, I think they really need to look at is is collections. Uh, salaries are another thing. Uh, you got to pay uh, good money to get good people, and I understand that. And uh, but Habersham County Medical Center is always taking care of my family. They took care of my father before he died. I just got my mother out of the emergency room uh, Saturday, mm-hmm. and uh, and they did an outstanding job on her. And, uh, and, and I have no complaints. I've never had a bad thing to say about the hospital. There's a lot of people that say things about that. I don't get where they come from, but that's their opinion. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, Habersham County Medical Center should stay a county hospital. But we just got to, uh, 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 we owe, I don't know, 20 million or whatever. Once the debt is eliminated, things will level out mm-hmm. and then you just got to get your collections in order and so you're you know, not you're not interested in a partnership with uh, another larger hospital or something like that you're more interested in, in getting the debt collected to pay pay off the, the debt I would consider a partnership absolutely oh you would okay. but but who is going to come in and and take over something like that with the 20 million dollar debt mm-hmm. I mean sometimes you know the commissioners did it yeah. the, we owe the money yeah so they let's did. get up let's pay it you know, and get aggressive. They're talking about a $7 million administration building. Uh, they're talking about $4 million in the bank. You know, write those people a check for $8 million and let's start paying our debt. Mm-hmm. You're not, you know, if you don't pay your debt, you don't get respected by nobody. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. The, the commissioners are just kicking this you're kicking this can down the road. And, you know, it wasn't even mentioned last night till I said so. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just pathetic. It's just, it's just pathetic. It just shows how, you know, they don't want to have anything to do with it. They say, well, that was here before I got there. Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's a part that has to be addressed. And we have to got to do that. And I will do it. I'll be at that hospital every day, five days a week, if not Saturday and Sunday. And I'll be walking up and down the halls and just looking at things and see how they think is run. If you want to find out how something is run, you go hang around there. We have over 500 miles of roads in Habersham County and uh, at the same forum that you just referenced. Uh, about over 400 are paved roads and, and uh, about 80 percent. And the rest are gravel roads, yep. dirt roads. Uh, there are some people who feel like we need more of those roads paved. What are your thoughts on that, and what do you think about that? Uh, if if it's it's economically and financially better to pave it, concrete, asphalt. The technology is there. The county's got all this equipment. They got these drivers. They got just people that operate this equipment that know what they're doing. They're some of the finest people out there at that county shop. You, you I mean, you can't get no better people. Danny Thomas, Hamilton, the rest of those guys, you got uh, John Stamey out there. These people are country folk, but they can operate a piece of equipment. Uh, if, now, there's some people that do not want their road paved. Well, if you can't get the easements and you can't get the signatures, you know, no problem. That's what they want, mm-hmm. fine with them. Mm-hmm. But if you can get them, pave it. Uh, what do you think is the biggest problem facing the county? Biggest challenge, the thing that needs to be worked on most if you're elected to office? We just got to stop this. Just there's just too much going on. We got the airport. We've got this. We're gonna have to finish the airport. The airport is gonna cost the taxpayers a chunk of money, and it's gonna be a long time before the airport makes any money. You don't make any money off fuel. They think you know. Well, you do make a little money, but we're talking millions and millions of dollars we've invested in that airport, and it's catering to the wealthy. Catering to the people who, what is the percentage of people driving cars and light trucks compared uh, and registered cars, registered trucks in this county, and people that have registered airplanes? You know, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. We had other places to put our money. That Tatum man was running there at that airport, been running it for years and doing an outstanding job, and all of a sudden these people come flying in there and they think they know what they're doing. It's been the biggest screwed up mess. It's gonna cost us millions before it's over with, and it's gonna be decades before that thing ever, if, you know, you gotta pay the debt first, and then, you know, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So one, one final question for you, Locke. Uh, if you win the primary and you're elected in the general election, so how will Habersham County be a better place uh, with Locke and the Commissioner's Court? There's more being a commissioner than just showing up for a meeting. You see them. As soon as that commission meeting open, they're out the door. They hide. I'm not going to hide. 
there's things I want to do. There's things I want to get some of these debts paid. I want to get this spending under control. You cannot in debt your children and your grandchildren. It is not our job. And a leadership is important. You've got to, you know, people got to understand what their job is. They've got to do their job. There's a lot of people that are upset with what the, the county is doing right now. You don't, you know, that's where the bread is at the taxpayers. That's where we get back to a business. Those commissioners know this money is coming in every year. They can estimate within, you know, $100,000 about how much money is coming in, and that's how they, they get their spending habits. And I'm not going to do that. I want to build up, uh, eliminate this debt. Let's get on the debt, pay the debt off, and work on it. Just get on it and let that be a big priority of my administration. I don't, I don't like debt. I'm 59 years old, and I, I have no mortgage. I have no credit card debt, no car payment. I got a lawnmower payment and a little old piece of equipment payment, but everything I've got is about bought and paid for. One last question. Yes, sir. Are you a registered voter? Absolutely. <laughs> if you don't vote, you keep your mouth shut, don't you come complaining to me. <laughs> and that's just the way I feel about it. I don't, if you, you know, that's what irks me more than anything. You got people that say this and say that, and the first thing I ask them, I says, did you vote? And they say, well, I, uh, and I say, uh-uh, don't, you know. It's, it's, it's your right to do so, and that's one way you can say something, and you don't have to express anything to anybody but just go in there and cast your ballot. And if you don't do that, it's, um, you need to think about yourself. We've been visiting with Locke Arnold, a candidate for Habersham County Commissioners, District 5. And Locke, we wish you luck. Thank you, sir. I do. All right. Have a great day. You have a good day. Welcome to now Habersham as we review the candidates for the upcoming primary elections on May 24th today. We're speaking with uh, Dale Green, a candidate for County Commissioner District 5. Welcome. Thank you. Dale. Uh, let's just start off. What, what formal education have you had that has prepared you for a role as a county commissioner? I uh, was born here in Habersham County. I went to school for two years at Habersham Mills School, private school. The next Ten years I spent in the public education system here in Habersham County. I graduated from Habersham Central High School in 1972. I think government needs to be a lot simpler than what it is now, and I really don't think you have to have all kind of degrees and stuff to, to be able to run county government. So uh, your work experience and the things that you, that you went through in life can teach you a whole lot about uh, being able to govern and how you see things. That's a great answer. What about informal uh, experience, training you, things, experiences you've had in your life to prepare you to be a commissioner, non-formal classroom education? What things have you done that would prepare you to manage budgets or manage people uh, or resources in our county? My dad had a cabinet shop for years, uh, Green's Cabinet Shop, and I worked with him for quite a few years. After he retired, my brother and I, we kept the business going. We uh, ran it for several years ourselves. And then uh, I worked in other places where I was uh, in positions where I had to take care of uh, what people were doing and oversee things that was happening, such as the personnel and the customer care services. Uh, we have seven municipalities in Habersham County. Uh, so how do you see your role, how would you see your role as a county commissioner in working as a team uh, with these other local uh, government entities, these cities? I think the county government itself needs to uh, be keenly aware of the cities and be a leader for the cities because I think the cities really look to the county to see exactly what they can do and it needs to be done. And I think the county can cause things to be simpler for the cities. What challenges uh, do you see facing Habersham County if you were elected? What are some of the first things you might focus on? Today? What are our needs currently? One of the, one of the things that I have noticed uh, for, for quite a few years, most of the people in this county that I know have really been concerned about Habersham County Medical Center. And I have, I was born at Habersham County Medical Center in 1955, but I have thought for several years that there is a pathway 
for us to join up with somehow Northeast Georgia Medical Center. And I know it's been discussed for a while. I've watched the Brazelton campus and what they've done down there. And I have noticed there are a lot of similarities between them and us. And I still believe that there is a, a way that we can work things out where we will have better, uh, better medical facility here in this county. Are you a registered voter? Yes. <laughs> uh, being a county commissioner takes up a lot of time. Do you have time available to fulfill that job? Yes, I do. I, uh, right now, I'm, I drive a school bus full-time for the Habersham County Board of Education. Uh, that takes a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours in the evening, and then I have uh, other times that I can uh, be involved as a county commissioner. I haven't seen this here in Habersham County. I, uh, my family and I have lived here uh, getting close to 30 years, but I, I grew up in another state and lived for many years in another state. So in some cases uh, in news stories, we see county commissioners owning or having interest in side businesses that benefit from decisions that Habersham, not Habersham, but county commissioners make, things they vote on uh, that cost money and have to be funded. Uh, do you have any side interests or businesses where you would uh, benefit from if you were a uh, county commissioner? No, I don't. Uh, I am a member of the TORCH here at this church and have been for, I guess, maybe 16, 17 years. But uh, I am not a member of any uh, of the uh, clubs or, or things that's in the county, and I don't have any other interests besides that. My wife works at Ethicon. In my campaign, I paid the $288 qualifying fee, and I haven't spent anything else besides that. And I haven't asked for money from anyone, and I haven't taken anything from anyone. And I have enjoyed the way things have dropped into place that, that you could do stuff and do it rather simply, such as this interview. <laughs> Let me ask you, some people might not, uh, might not know you. Maybe they haven't lived here uh, as long as you have, uh, Dale. Uh, what are some things that you do in your life, interest, hobbies, volunteer, things that would help people uh, to get to know you a little bit better? Uh, our grandchildren are very involved in the rec department. And, and the, uh, here at the church, is, is there, this is a great ministry, and, and we are really uh, uh, pleased with what we've been able to accomplish and do here. And then um, just, just driving a school bus and being involved with uh, the county and, and being involved around the people, a lot of people um, know me from that. What about the budget of Habersham County? Um, of course, voters are always wanting to see the budgets trimmed and the people who have to carry out the services, law enforcement, the judicial branch, things like that, probably often feel they don't have enough money. What are your thoughts about the budget um, and uh, the funding and how do you see that? Is that an issue? What do you think about that? I, th the, I think the budget is a real issue to most people. And the overall uh, way that money is spent in the county by the county commissioners and the Board of Education has been of great interest to a lot of people. And I, it's something we have to look at very closely and see if there's, there's not ways we can do. The, one of the first things I noticed when I uh, began looking into the county commissioner's spot was the fact that 56% of all of our property taxes are already gone before we even get to start uh, spending anything. Somebody else is getting most of the funds. And when, when you're doing that, of course, you're very limited to uh, the amount of money you're going to have. So you've got to be careful about what's going on. However, good government, I believe, is just like paying an electric bill at home. Uh, there are times you consume more and there's times you consume less and it may stay the same. A governing body, a, a board of commissioners should be able to govern if it's less, fine, if it's the same, fine, and they've got to take responsibility even if it's more. And, and the people in this county are good people. And they, they understand if you can show them and tell them exactly what you need. 30 years ago when I moved to Habersham County and was a, a, a gentleman with a, a tremor gentleman with more hair, uh, I was in a musical by Michael Shirley uh, in, in our town here that centered on the courthouse uh, of Habersham County, the original courthouse with its clock and its tower. Um, now we've moved out of uh, the middle courthouse in between those two and it's sort of sitting, there are some offices, administrative offices located in the courthouse right now. 
But there is an issue on the horizon about what to do with that building, whether, uh, well, I'll let you speak to that. What should happen to the uh, older Haversham County Courthouse? I, I drive by there almost on a daily basis, and I, had, I, I am not convinced that we can still that we can't still make good use out of that old courthouse. I know I've heard you know different ones say that they did studies and stuff and found that you know it was just almost beyond use, but I haven't really been able to look at those studies, so I I, I don't know how closely they were looked at. And sometimes, I mean, I don't even know who did this study, if it was somebody who uh, thought it was in their best interest to talk the people into tearing it down, of course they're going to uh, try to get you to see it their, their way. So I think we've really got to look at it and see, because to me it don't look like it's beyond repair. It looks like it should still be a good facility to use. We have somewhere between 500 and 600 miles of roads in Habersham County. Most of those, probably 80% are paved and about 20% or so are not paved, they're gravel roads. Uh, there has been some discussion by some people in the county that we should attempt to pave either all the roads or at least more roads. How do you feel about that? What do you think about that? Well, I grew up driving on a dirt road for almost 20 years before I got married and I mean I was 20 years old before I got married so I drove for about four or five years. A dirt road is tough to travel on. It's, it's got its uh, uh, disadvantages for sure and I would like to see as many roads paved as possible that we can that we can afford to do. Dale Green, pleasant to talk to you. Good luck in your race for County Commissioner. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm Dick Stafford for Now Habersham, and today we're speaking with Ed Nichols, the candidate for County Commissioner District 5. Ed, welcome to Now Habersham. Thank you. Glad to be here. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, past and formal education you had that made you uh, qualified to be a County Commissioner. Well, I grew up in Clarksville, uh, graduated from North Habersham, went to Young Harris College, then I went to the University of Georgia. I left there after when I graduated and moved to South Carolina, and I worked for three different companies over 30 years in management primarily in human resources and management training. Uh, I, used to, I still do seminars for management training, uh, communications, speaking, public speaking, that sort of thing. So um, I have quite a bit of experience in my, in my past that I think comes in good play with the county commissioner. I was executive director of the Habersham Chamber of Commerce from 2002 to 2009, and we grew it from 240 members to about 600. So. Uh, we were very successful there, and, I, and I, I know a lot of people in the county, a lot of the businesses through my chamber connections. As an incumbent, you've already been working uh, in that role on, on the commissioners, uh, but we have seven municipalities, and, uh, and they have their government entities or law enforcement, things like that, as well as the county. So um, in the past, some have said that the, this, these groups haven't been uh, on the same team. Uh, although more recently, a lot of people feel that maybe we've worked a little bit better. What is your thoughts for the future in the relationship of our cities, our municipalities, and the and the county? Well, you know, when I was at the chamber, we would uh, we would promote Havisham County and our seven little towns, and each one can draw tourists, you know, to for their particular things. Like Clarksville's known now for having quite a few restaurants, Tallulah Falls for the views. But uh, when I joined the, the commission, I, I realized that there had been some not good communication. So we have really improved that, and our new county manager, Phil Sutton, has, has done a great job of that. We communicate constantly with the cities. We work together. We have meetings together. Uh, we have intergovernmental agreements uh, among most of the cities. Uh, we have mutual aid agreements for fire and safety. So we're working very close. And we will continue to do that probably even closer in the future because as we grow, we've got to have water and sewer in various locations. The county is not in the sewer business. The county is not in the water business. It's up to the five towns that have that. And so <clears throat> we'll be working very closely with them, particularly when we have to run water and sewer to new industry or new developments. And the county will chip in and help pay for it. I mean, we'll, we'll partner. Habersham County uh, Medical Center is uh, well loved in our county and my family, all of us have used it at one time or another and uh, have friendships with many people who work there. Uh, but the county hospital, like many small rural county hospitals, has some difficulties, some real challenges. So uh, what do you see for the future in terms of the county's relationship with the hospital and the hospital board here? Well, we were in dire straits three years ago, really bad. And they had they have a 38 
we have a $38 million debt that we're paying off. But um, a recent article was interesting where it, some medical magazines said that uh, stated that probably any hospital with less than 100 beds will not survive in the next decade unless they merge or partner with a larger hospital where you get more efficiencies. So uh, we saved the hospital by assuming the debt, the county commissioners did. We did that by taking the, the buildings and the land and that's now ours, the county's. Uh, we assumed the debt, we restructured the bonds and lowered the interest rate, we're saving a million dollars a year in interest. Uh, our payments are 2.3 million a year to pay off the bonds. We, I anticipate the hospital authority who really manages the hospital and we have some input with the authority. We appoint the members, of course. And we anticipate that we will be looking strongly at merging or partnering or affiliating with somebody. I know St. Mary's out of Athens has just taken Ty Cobb, I believe, in Livonia. They've, they've taken a Greens, built a new hospital in Greensboro. So we're looking to, to merge or partner, but we want to always keep Habersham's name on it, and we want to keep the the deeds to the property so nobody could close that hospital. But it's still viable and it's a great hospital. We, my whole family's had surgery and everything else there. So it's a great hospital. We just want to keep it and, and, and somehow survive over the next mm -hmm. few years. Mm -hmm. uh, so that there might, I mean, you're well known in our county, but there might be people who might not know you as well. So uh, what about uh, volunteers, hobbies, activities outside of the commissioner's court, things that you've done in the time you've been here uh, that maybe help you in your job as a county commissioner or, or will be if you're reelected? Uh, of course, my wife and I are members and, my, and one of my daughters is a member of Clarksville Methodist Church. I've been a member there most of my life. My parents came there in 1938 and, and joined that church. So we're, we're pretty big workers in our church. We all, Judy and I also, my wife, we deliver meals on wheels uh, several times a year. We're involved in, in several uh, activities, soup kitchen, we've helped with that. And so uh, my wife uh, volunteers one day a week at our thrift store uptown on the square. So we're involved in a lot of activities and particularly revolving around our church. Uh, I also am involved uh, with the rec department in, in sports keeping my finger in, in that and, and monitoring what's going on with our recreation department, which serves thousands of children in our county. Great rec department. So I'm just uh, involved in that whole thing, everything. Mm -hmm. I have the time now. I'm semi-retired, and so I get involved in everything that's going on in the county. Senior center, I go there occasionally and, and uh, help serve lunch and do things. So, mm -hmm. Are you a registered voter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have always been. Okay. And there are 19,000 in this county, you know. And, uh, I, I know. The problem we have is, I think, four years ago, only like, what, 7,000 voted. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in another state, but I, my, I brought my family here 30 years ago, and my children have grown up here and been to school here, and now have their own careers. Um, but where I used to be a reporter in another state, um, the county commissioners off and on for quite some time would get into a little bit of trouble in that they owned uh, their own businesses outside of uh, the uh, being a county commissioner. And in some cases, those businesses uh, flourished and made money from decisions that were made by the county commissioners. So do you own any businesses where you might profit from decisions you might make as a county commissioner? No, I don't. I don't have any. In fact, thinking about our commissioners, I don't know of any uh, that have anything like that going sure. on. So. Well, we do have some politicians in Georgia who, <laughs> in the state legislature and Senate, who do own businesses that profit from decisions they make. I have a business at Nichols Consulting and I do uh, seminars oh, on management and, and communications at some of the colleges in Georgia. Sure. How would, how would, how, now you've already been in the position, but let's just talk about the future. How would having Ed Nichols uh, as a county commissioner uh, make Habersham better? I think one way is that I'm right on top of everything, everything we're doing. We've got to have a new administration building, either fix the old one, which I really don't want to do, or build a new one, an energy efficient building. We've got so much going on with the airport. Uh, we're spending, the federal government is spending a lot of money on our airport. It's going to be a great thing. We've got uh, so many things going on that I like to be involved with. Uh, 
we, for the first time, our this past year, our airport made money for the first time ever. So we're we're doing a lot of things. We're we have uh, contracts on land for development for the first time in many years. Uh, I can see us maybe buying another piece of land if we could get another contract. So we're Habersham is going to grow, and I'd like to be part of it. Now, an important thing is going to happen in two years. In 2018, Habersham County will be celebrating its bicentennial. Uh, Habersham County, United States was only 42 years old when Habersham County was established. We're probably, the, I think, the 13th county in Georgia. So I, I, I would like to be on the commission two years from now to help uh, publicize the bicentennial, to draw tourists to the county, to put us on the map, so to speak. And if you search the internet, you'll find it's a great, great resource for development, for tourists, when you, when you celebrate a bicentennial, when you have festivals, parades, or whatever you want to do. Finally, uh, Ed, let me ask you a question. Uh, at the recent political forum, there was this topic was brought up, and you just mentioned it just a, a moment ago, and that is what to do with the old, I was about to say the old county courthouse, but it'd be the middle county courthouse. The, the really old one is, is no longer there, but what should happen to that? Uh, I don't really have a conclusion at this point, but I think there's several options. One option would be, uh, if we don't use it, would be to give it to Clarksville, to sell it to Clarksville, to tear it down, uh, sell the land to somebody, or give it to Clarksville. It could be made into a beautiful plaza or retail shops. Uh, another option would be to try to market it to somebody that maybe wants to have a motel or a hotel or something. So at this point, there, I think we're open to any option. And once we decide what we're going to do, then we got to explore those options. We've been speaking with Ed Nichols, a candidate uh, incumbent for Habersham County District 5. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. We hope you've benefited from these interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. And we want to remind you, be sure to vote May 24th.